understand, Jake. You don't understand, Jake. Sarah told her husband, Babe, I just shot the kids. She was asleep when I went to sleep last night. And I woke up. She told me, Dad, she was saying, I just shot the kids. And I, I, I didn't want to believe it. I went in there, and they were, they were dead. Today's case is one where we know what happened, but we are still left with so, so many questions. It will never make sense to me how a mother can look at her child as anything but a blessing. I will never understand how a parent can look at her child and want to kill them. Then to carry the act out, ripping the life away from an innocent little baby who did absolutely nothing to deserve such violence. In this case, we have a mother who did just that. She brutalized her two baby girls, and to this day, we have no idea why. But after hearing the details, I do want to know what you all think about why this happened, because through discussion, I do think we can start to make better sense of this all. But before we get into the case, I want to say a huge thank you to Golden Nugget Casino for partnering with me on today's video. The Golden Nugget Casino app has all of your casino favorites right on your phone. With over 300 real money games, including slots, blackjack, roulette, and live dealer, you can get the Vegas experience right in the comfort of your own home. With the app, you can make any of life's mundane tasks into golden moments. You can play to win while waiting at the airport, which is typically what I do. You can play while waiting at the doctor's office, taking a break from doing chores. Anytime, any day, you can play Golden Nugget Casino. Golden Nugget Casino is a fun, engaging way to win and play. It's also safe, secure, and reliable, so you know you can trust where you're putting your money. Golden Nugget Casino is offering viewers of my channel a special offer. New customers who download the app today and use code RACHELSHANNON will get $77 in casino site credits when you deposit $7 or more. Again, download Golden Nugget Casino today using the link below and use code RACHELSHANNON and you can get $77 in casino site credits when you deposit $7 or more. Thank you again so much to Golden Nugget Casinos for partnering with me on today's video. With that being said, let's discuss the tragic case of Kaylee and Kenley. Sarah Henderson was the mother of her two young children, Kaylee and Kenley. Kaylee Danielle Hall was born on June 18, 2010 in Garland, Texas. Her little sister, Kenley Elizabeth Pallett, was born on January 22, 2012 in Dallas, Texas. The girls were born to different fathers, and at the time, they were living with Sarah's then-husband, Jacob Henderson, who loved and cared for those girls as if they were his own. At the time, seven-year-old Kaylee and five-year-old Kenley were living with their mother and Jacob in a home in Mobbing, Texas, which is around 55 miles southeast of Dallas. Kaylee and Kenley were described as being inseparable. They weren't just sisters. They were best friends. They loved dancing together, riding their bicycles, and swimming. They both went to Southside Elementary School, where they loved spending time with their best friends. The girls were known to be mischievous, often picking on their older brother, Wyatt, who was living with his own biological father at the time. Both Kaylee and Kenley loved dressing up and getting new shoes, but most of all, they loved their family. Anytime someone would come to visit them, their faces just lit up, and they were so happy. These girls could just put a smile on anyone's face, filling the hearts of everyone around them. According to family members of Sarah's, she had a bit of a past with bad relationships, and she was very young when she started having children, but she did try her best to be the best mother she could after having her two daughters. She loved her daughters and would do anything for them. However, back in 2010, Sarah and her then-boyfriend received a visit from CPS due to reports of child neglect of her oldest son, Wyatt. When social workers investigated, they found that Sarah and her boyfriend were not providing adequate care for Wyatt, which is actually pretty big of an understatement. They found that he was in a state of considerable or extreme vulnerability. There were instances in which Wyatt had eaten feces. Another time, he fell off a truck and injured himself. Then, he ingested blood pressure medication not meant for him, which resulted in a hospital visit. Then, it was determined that Sarah's boyfriend had been sexually abusing Wyatt. Obviously, 
All of this put together showed that Sarah was not protecting her child and was not doing near enough to care for him. At that time, Wyatt was taken away from her and placed into the care of his father where he remains to this day. Sarah was also required to undergo counseling and parenting classes, which she did. Later that same year, Kaylee was born before her sister Kenley joined the family two years later. After the birth of her two daughters, Sarah did not have any further contact with CPS. I will note though that in 2015, police were called to her residence with reports of a verbal disturbance, but when officers arrived on scene, they just found that Sarah was on the phone yelling and arguing with someone outside. So yes, she technically did have a minor incident, but it was never anything serious. For the years after her son was taken and after her daughters were born, it appeared that Sarah did truly clean up her act. She did struggle with her mental health, which I will get more into later, but her family said that she truly loved and cared for her daughters and did her best to raise them. That was until around 11.30 p.m. on Wednesday, November 21st, 2017, when Sarah's secrets would be revealed and when everyone around her would realize that she was lying about everything this entire time. At this time, 911 received a call from Jacob Henderson, Sarah's husband, requesting help, saying that his wife is freaking out, acting like someone is out to get her. She wasn't acting violent, but she was in a different state of mind. The dispatcher then let him know that someone was coming out to help. CMS, this is Patricia. I just thought I was wondering if I could get somebody to come out here and check my wife out. Okay, what's the address of the emergency? Give me just one moment, please. Hello? Yes, sir. This is Trisha from EMS. We got disconnected. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, tell me exactly what's going on. Um, my wife, she's about, I don't know, like, I don't know, something's going on with her. Okay. Can you describe what's going on, the symptoms? Like she's, like she's freaking out like somebody's out to get her. Okay, give us just one moment. You won't listen to me. You won't talk to me. Sir, give me just one second. We're going to get help on the way. I'm putting in some information for him, okay? Okay, thank you. Don't hang up. Stay on the line with me, okay? Sir. I'm good. I'm good. No, you're not. Yes, I'm good. I'm okay. You're not good. She's saying she's all right now. She's violent. No, ma'am. She's saying she's fine now. Okay, we can still have them come out and check her out, okay? Uh, okay, does, uh, she, does she have a weapon? No, ma'am. Where is she right now? Right here in front of me. Is this a suicide attempt? No, ma'am. Is she thinking about committing suicide? No. Is she completely alert? Yeah, just a different state of mind. Okay, is she responding appropriately? Yes, Sir? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm sending the paramedics to help you now. Stay on the line. I'll tell you exactly what to do next. If it's safe to do so, observe her continuously. If it's safe to do so, protect her from herself. Okay. Now, shortly after this call was placed, Jacob called 911 a second time by 11.45 p.m. This time, he was actually canceling the request for help, saying that things were better. EMS, this is Jenner, right? Oh, yes, ma'am. I just talked to a lady in there a while ago about sending someone out. Okay. Uh, I don't see if I can get a disregard. Okay, what was the address of the emergency? Forest Lane Drive. And you, are you the one that called it in originally? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And why would you like to cancel the call? Uh, she's fine now. Okay, so just let me verify. You want to cancel the ambulance at this time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, I'll let them know, okay? Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Despite this, officers were still dispatched to the residence to check things out. Once there, they spoke with both Sarah and Jacob, who told officers that they were fine and didn't need any further assistance. 
Officers checked around the home to see if there was anything suspicious, but they felt that things were calm and normal and nothing serious seemed to be going on. They said that nobody was suicidal. There were no signs of violence on either side, no signs of anything. So they cleared the situation and left without taking any further action. However, nearly three hours after this welfare check was made by 2.42 a.m. now going into November 2nd, Jacob called 911 once again. This time, he was in a state of distress and panic. He was holding back tears, choking over his words, panting and breathing heavily. At times, he started screaming out in distress. On this call, Jacob told the dispatcher that his wife had just shot and killed their children. That night, Jacob said that he fell asleep and woke up to his wife, Sarah, pointing a 380 caliber pistol at him, attempting to shoot him. But after she pulled the trigger, the gun jammed and failed to fire. Jake was very, very lucky in that moment. After the gun malfunctioned and failed to fire, Sarah tried fixing it and pulling the slide back again to try and get another shot off. But as she was doing that, Jake jumped up and was able to get the gun away from her. After trying to shoot Jake, Sarah told her husband, babe, I just shot the kids. Of course, he got up to see what was going on, only to find that five-year-old Kenley and seven-year-old Kaylee were both dead in the living room, each after suffering from one gunshot wound to their heads. The girls had fallen asleep, probably on the couch in the living room, and while they were asleep, Sarah went in there and shot each of them one time in the head. In that 911 call, Jake said that Sarah was clutching her own neck like she was trying to kill herself by choking herself. While worrying about making this report and getting help, also right after realizing that his wife just tried to kill him, he was still trying to prevent Sarah from doing anything to harm herself. During the call, you can hear Sarah in the background also sounding distressed, asking repeatedly, why did I do that, Jake? What's going on here, Jake? Saying that she was going to hell. She was also asking God for forgiveness. She was also panicking, hyperventilating, and crying in the background. Jake said that he didn't want to believe that the children were dead. He said that Sarah kept saying that someone was after her, but it didn't make any sense because, again, no one was there. He was still in just this state of shock, really not being able to make sense of what was going on around him. All of this was just so much to take in, and he didn't know what to do. He just kept asking why over and over and over again. Now, I'm going to play the call, but I do want to warn you that this call is very distressing and hard to listen to. It's about four to five minutes long in case it's too much for you and you need to skip over it. I totally understand because, again, just a warning, it's a very, very intense and distressing call. Henderson County, 911. Yes. My, my wife. My, my wife is shot a kid. Okay, is this Jacob? Yes. Okay, what is your wife's name? She, she's trying to commit suicide now. She's trying to choke herself. I don't want to know that. Okay, what's your wife's name? Why do you keep grabbing your neck? What is her name, sir? Sarah Henderson. Sarah Henderson? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, baby. I can't. You can't what? All right, and how old are the children? Seven and five. And they're in the bedroom? Huh? Are they in the bedroom, sir? No, they're in the living room. They're in the living room and they're not breathing? No. Were you home when she did this or did you just get home? I was asleep. You were asleep? Yeah. Is she under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? No. And you have the weapon now, sir? Yes, ma'am, I got it. Okay. God, forgive me. Please. Are there any other weapons in the house? Yes. Okay. Can, does she have access to them, or are you keeping her from doing that? No. No, I'm trying to. 
Okay, sir, we do have help on the way, okay? We have an, an ambulance headed that way as well as officers, okay? Okay. Okay. Is there anything okay. else you need to... No. Okay. Why did I do that, babe? I don't know. She's not trying to leave or anything, correct? What's going on here, Jay? Nothing's going on. That's why I tried telling me. She keeps saying somebody's after her. There's nobody after her. There's nothing. She keeps saying people are coming. There's nobody even here. What did I do, Lord? What did I do? <laughs> what did I do, Lord? What did I do, God? Say it. Say it off the phone. What? No, stop. Get off the phone. Wow. I'm going to just keep you on the phone with me, okay? Okay. <laughs> what? 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 Jill. Jill. Oh, damn. She's not, Why? She's not trying to leave or anything, is she? No. Okay. Were the children asleep in the living room, or did they get up? Do you know? Yeah, they, were, they were asleep. They were asleep in the living room, and then she went in there? Yeah. Okay. I was asleep. And were you asleep in the bedroom? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Was uh, Sarah asleep in the bedroom with you when she got up? I guess. She was asleep when I went to sleep last night. And I woke up. She come in there and she goes, Dave, I just shot the kids. And, I, I, and I, I, I didn't want to believe it. I went in there and they were, they were dead. Stop choking yourself. Quit. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, babe. I'm not, babe. <sighs> I just need, I just need some help. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting them out there as fast as we can, okay, Mr. Henderson? Please. Okay. Please. Please what? Please shoot me. Please. I'm well, not shooting you. No. No. I can't. Jacob. Uh, Jacob. Can you hear me? Where, where, yeah. did, where, did, where did she shoot the kids? In the head. In the head on both sides. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and you have gone down there and kneeled against him, and they're not breathing. Yes. Okay. Blood out of head. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can't stop, Jake. Can't stop what? I don't know. What, what is 
Dude, why'd you do it? You never went this way? Are you serious? Looks like their officers may be pulling up right now. Do you see them outside? Shoot me. No, here. Okay, well, I'll let you go now, okay, so you can open the door. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> When officers arrived to this horrific scene, they found that little Kaylee and Kenley were in fact dead, each after suffering a single gunshot wound to the head. At that time, it was pretty clear to investigators what happened. Sarah shot and killed her own kids and attempted to murder her husband as well. When officers showed up, she was still acting hysterical. She was apologizing and asking why she did this, but then, once she was taken into the station for questioning, her demeanor changed quite a bit. In that interview, she admitted to killing her kids right away. When asked why, she basically just said, I was going crazy, just caught up in everyday life, you know? They also asked her if she was on drugs at the time that this happened, and I believe she did say that she had smoked some weed much earlier that day, but by the time of the shootings, the effects should have been worn off. When speaking with officers and making her confession, they said that Sarah showed pretty much no emotion. She spoke in a very flat tone, a very matter-of-fact way, showing no remorse for what she did, which again is a complete switch up from how she was acting in that 911 call and when officers first arrived. It was very eerie to see such a drastic switch up in her demeanor after seeing her so distraught and so hysterical. At first, it seemed like Sarah must have just snapped. According to family, Sarah has a history of mental illness being diagnosed with bipolar disorder at one point. In the weeks leading up to the murders, she had been acting increasingly paranoid to her friends and started asking others for help. She had been saying for weeks that someone was after her and that she was being followed. That being said, it appears that mental health played a big role in this. And again, maybe she went into some sort of delusional state and shot her children and tried shooting her husband without even realizing what she was doing. Then as Jake called 911, she snapped out of it and realized what she had done. However, after further investigation was done, it appears that this was not a spur of the moment break of insanity. It appears that Sarah had been planning this murder for two weeks. Now, frustratingly, investigators have never announced what information led them to that conclusion. However, I saw in one source that Sarah ended up admitting that the whole thing was planned, though I'm not exactly sure when. After Sarah's arrest, she was charged with two counts of capital murder of children under the age of 10. To note, killing a child under the age of 10 is an automatic capital offense punishable by death or life without parole. So, she could either be facing life or death. She was also charged with the attempted murder for trying to shoot Jake, as well as an assault on a public servant for something that happened during the arrest, though what exactly happened isn't clear. My guess is that she attacked someone while they were trying to arrest her. At her plea hearing, she actually pleaded not guilty due to reason of insanity. At the time, her bail was set to $2 million. She did not post her bail, so she remained in jail under suicide watch for the months that followed. After her plea, over the course of several months, Sarah underwent multiple evaluations by two psychologists to determine her mental competence to stand trial. According to those two psychologists, Sarah did not have any sort of mental illness severe enough to prevent her from being able to assist in her own defense they found her competent to stand trial. Then, by August of 2018, Sarah filed a notice that she was going to be claiming insanity as a defense at her trial. Basically, what this means is that she was saying she was mentally insane at the time of the killings. She may be mentally competent now, able to look back and realize that what she did was wrong, therefore she's able to stand trial. But at the moment she killed her daughters, she was insane and did not know what she was doing. That is what she was claiming. After submitting this defense, the courts appointed two different psychologists to evaluate Sarah once again to determine if she was insane at the time of the shooting. Turns out, one found her insane and the other found her sane. I want to note that in many cases like this, the prosecution will hire an expert while the defense hires their own expert. 
it is not uncommon that the expert on either side will come to different conclusions. Of course, when a prosecutor hires someone to examine the defendant, the prosecution is hoping their expert comes to a certain conclusion, therefore motivating the expert to agree with the prosecution. Same goes for the defense. If the defense hires a psychologist to say that Sarah is insane, they are a little bit more motivated to diagnose her as insane. That is just how the justice system works. What it really comes down to at that point is who has the better argument for their respective diagnosis. So once this case goes to trial, it is up to the jury to definitively decide if Sarah was insane at the time of the shooting based on the information they hear on both sides. In Texas, a jury can find a person not guilty due to reason of insanity if, quote, at the time of the conduct charged, the actor, as a result of severe mental disease or defect, did not know his conduct was wrong. If the person is found to be insane, then that person will either be committed to a mental institution or do outpatient treatment for evaluation to determine what kind of mental health help they need. No more than 30 days after this determination is made, the courts will hold another hearing to decide if that person is a danger to themselves or others. If so, they may be committed again. Most of the time, in cases of capital murder, they will be committed for life regardless. In June of 2018, the prosecution did announce that they were going to be seeking the death penalty in this case. Both sides were gearing up for trial, gathering evidence, and putting their cases together. The case was scheduled to go on trial by July 30th, 2019. However, just weeks before the trial was supposed to start, Sarah changed her plea. After coming to an agreement between the prosecution, Jake, and the father of her children, Sarah pleaded guilty to two charges of capital murder for the deaths of five-year-old Kinley and seven-year-old Kaylee. This was in exchange for the prosecution taking the death penalty off the table. Instead, she will be serving life in prison without the possibility of parole. After this plea deal was made, the DA stated, quote, Even with the split decision on Henderson's sanity, I believe the facts and her own statements show that she knew her actions were wrong. But with this plea, which was requested and approved by both Jacob Henderson and the father of one of the girls, we know that Sarah Henderson will be locked away for the rest of her natural life. The bars that keep her confined will be a daily reminder of what she did to those two beautiful girls, girls who loved their mommy and trusted that she would protect them. Choosing between death or life without parole is a difficult decision, but given all the facts and circumstances, I am confident that this plea will allow the family to move forward without being concerned whether Henderson will eventually be released from a mental hospital were she found to have been insane at the time of the offense. As of the last article I was able to find on this case, Sarah was sent to solitary confinement in prison for quite some time to protect her from the other prisoners due to how high profile her case was. I haven't seen anything else reported on this case since 2019 when she made that plea deal, so I assume by now she'd be in general population and that she's just living out the rest of her life behind bars, which is exactly where she belongs. To this day, a motive has never been revealed. As far as I've seen, Sarah never actually said why she did this beyond saying that she went crazy and was getting overwhelmed with life. To me, I do think there is some truth to that. I think she clearly wasn't mentally healthy. I mean, you have to be pretty unwell mentally to commit such a horrible crime like this to begin with. But I do think she planned this. I think she knew exactly what she was doing. And I think it was because she was tired of being a mom and just wanted to be done. Do I think she was thinking 100% clearly? No. Because when you murder your own children to make your life easier, you clearly are not considering the fact that you will be caught and spend your life in jail. But again, at the end of the day, I think she knew what she was doing and I think she knew it was wrong. Of course, my heart breaks for those two little girls, Kaylee and Kenley. They didn't deserve any of this. I think it was such a stroke of luck that the gun jammed when she was attempting to shoot Jake. That was such a miracle. I just wish that the gun would have jammed before she even got the chance to kill her kids. But that isn't what happened, and now two innocent little girls are gone, and so many people have to live the rest of their lives knowing what happened to them. Jake has to live with the trauma of finding the kids he loved dead and knowing that his own wife tried to shoot him too. 
I just hope that everyone involved can recover from all of this. But with that being said, that is all of the information I have on today's case. And now I want to know what you all think. Do you think Sarah snapped in a moment of temporary insanity? Or do you think she knew what she was doing? Do you think mental health played a role or was she just tired of being a wife and a mother? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts you have in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell too on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure to follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!